Good evening, everybody. Matrix here, and here's my watch list for April 17th. Okay, before we start, I want to make a note that uh, to say that Pinterest is announcing IPO on uh, its their, their IPO is opening tomorrow, so that is going to be a nice watch. Not necessarily a trade on the first day, as I definitely do not uh, advocate trading IPOs on the first day, especially for uh, newer and beginning traders. Uh, however, uh, it's definitely a good watch in my opinion. Uh, there's bound to be lots of lessons to learn. Um, yeah, so uh, the ticker symbol is P-I-N-S. Okay, so Pinterest announcing IPO. Now, uh, a lot of plays today uh, or, or going into tomorrow as we are uh, heading into earnings. Uh, take a look at the futures right now. We're gapping up two points, okay? So um, this is, uh, let's bring in the SPY real quick. So with the futures right now, gapping up two points from the close at, uh, from the close here at uh, the 290. So about um, this area, the 290.30 area, okay? Now, uh, what is it going to do tomorrow? It's actually opening uh, pretty flat. Definitely don't know. Today we had uh, the spy gap up and then it pulled back. And uh, at the end of the day, it, it pulled hard and then recovered right um right now we're gapping up a little bit above yesterday's close so i think uh tomorrow it wants to grind up and uh test the highs here at the 291 again and from there what will it do uh definitely don't know uh, this pull was a pretty sharp pull in my opinion so um gotta be careful of that it's uh overall the spy is a tough player to be quite honest because of how sharp these pulls can be and it's when it's going up it's going up ever so slowly right so um it's definitely painful um in my opinion to play it's a tougher play uh i'm probably gonna stay away from the etf uh, to be quite honest because there are so many other plays out there um especially with the earnings season so let's get right into it okay so uh, let's get into earnings first. Uh, the first play I will be watching is uh, UAL United Continental Holdings. Okay, um, they had a positive earnings reaction. Okay, uh, here is the news. I believe that's the news. Okay. Oh no, this is IBM. Um, they they beat earnings estimates for their quarter one but their sales missed a little bit. Uh, however, it did gap up, uh, came out with a pretty positive guidance. Overall, uh, the blue line here on the daily chart, this is uh, where the price is at, uh, 8820s, okay, 8810. Um, we are coming into a key resistance level, but I do wanna note that uh, we have gapped up over this major resistance area at 87.5, okay? So because of a positive earnings reaction, uh, I'm going to I'm going to plan for two plays. Uh the stock being so overextended, I do see a pullback coming uh for the profit take pullback. However, uh on the flip side, uh because it's a positive earnings catalyst, um if this 8750 starts holding, uh then then it's going to be a nice trend up day for uh, continuation from the earnings reaction. Okay, now how far will it go? As you can see here, uh, we have um, after hours highs here. I'm watching the resistance 8820. Um, the way it closed, it's, uh, it's gonna gap up in my opinion. So uh, probably a gap up is what I'm looking for and then sell off hard at the open pro profit take and then find some sort of bottom around the 8750 area and uh, run back up tomorrow. So it's gonna be like a pop, drop, and then run, uh, looking for the ABCD pattern tomorrow. Um, looking at this daily chart, we have very key resistance level here at 88.75, and if that breaks through, um, we could get a magnet up to the 88, 89, and uh, 90 level here. Um, looking overall prior to earnings, uh, people have been buying this up, right? So they basically just hit the jackpot. Um, right here on January 16th, their last earnings, 
uh, their highs is at 87.50, right? And you see that it sold off from there. Uh, they had a positive earnings gapped up and did like a doji day. So um, that's kind of what I'm expecting. I'm expecting like a range day tomorrow. So a gap up, pull, and then rip back up. So that's uh, UAL. We have some resistance at 88.75. I said already, uh, I'll be looking for support at 87.50s and 87.60s area here uh, if the dip comes in. And uh, if it doesn't hold, then uh, we're going to pull back down hard. And um, I, I do think we could pull back down to this 8670s area on the daily chart, perhaps even 8625. Okay, so uh, that's UAL. Next up, we have IBM. IBM had a negative earnings uh, reaction to the earnings report. Okay. Um, Looking overall at IBM uh, from its last earnings, it trended up nicely. Um, however, they came up with bad guidance, and the stock is currently sitting at around uh, 140.50 here. Okay, um, initially it dipped and got bought right back up here at uh, 139. So I want to take a look at 139. Actually, I marked off some levels. Why I'm not loading this? Let me load this up real quick here. IBM levels, okay, so we have a key support area at 139. With this being such a well-known name and well-known ticker, such a big company, I do expect this uh, massive support to hold. The average true range for the stock is $1.50, right? So um, 139 is also the 50 EMA. Uh, bad earnings callus. See if this holds tomorrow. I do expect a cover pop and a dip. Okay, we have some major resistance here at uh, 14150 as well as 142. I don't see the stock getting above 142 tomorrow because of the earnings catalyst, right? Uh, on the daily chart, it's actually pretty key. So let's mark off 142 right there, All right? Zoom in a little bit on daily chart. This is where it is. So uh, pop and drop or, or it, it, it there's two ways it can happen, right? Pre-market, it can grind down and can't come back down to test this 139. And from there, I'm going to watch for a bounce or a bottoming out, okay? Uh, because it's the 50 uh, SMA here. And uh, with the stock uh, this well-known and gapping down so hard, it usually tends to fill the gap a little bit at the open. So... At the open pre-market, if it grinds down and then start holding this 139, then I'm going to long it back up to the 142. I think it's going to play within this range here, the 139 to 142 area. Okay, if it pops out the gates in the open, then I'm looking for rejection at 142, pulling it back down to 139. So $3, quite a bit of range here, uh, comparing it to the average true range of $1.50. Uh, I marked off a range of... Um, two times this average true range, right? So uh, we'll have to see what it does pre-market, but I am watching for the pre-market slow grind down and then hold higher lows and then uh, start coming back up, okay? So uh, IBM, uh, if the 139 snaps though, I mean, it can definitely snap, then this is a very key support area here on the daily chart, but if it does snap, then... Uh, we could test the wicks here at the 138.40s, like this wick right here and this right here. Okay, zoom out a little bit. Let's take a look. Yeah, I don't see it drop any more lower though. I mean, that would cause major, major panic. Um, yeah, so looking at 141.50, 142, uh, support side 139. Very easy play. IBM has very tight, tight spread. And... Uh, I prefer IBM and UAL, okay? Uh, next up, of course, we have Netflix. Now, Netflix is a tougher trader, in my opinion, uh, because it's so volatile and sporadic. Let's load up some lines here real quick, uh, some support and resistance. Netflix took me a little while to figure out because the stock is... Uh, basically been playing in this range. And then finally, I look back on the chart here on uh, January 18th here. This is the earnings day. 
Okay, and I was looking for a key uh, support level. The stock has a, kind of like a mixed reaction. It um, initially dumped and then it reclaimed a little bit, closed a little bit under its lows. So uh, the 360 very key resistance level, uh, the catalyst, the guidance is a little, it's a little weak. Um, so I do expect it to pull a little bit. It all depends on this 353 area, okay? And how did I come up with 353? Let's uh, put that up here. 353 is from its prior earnings. You see this massive volume here on uh, January 18th. This is the inflection point, okay, from its prior earnings, right? So from its prior earnings, it dumped hard from the 353. And then it uh, came back up. Oh, actually, before we even talk about that, I want to mention at the beginning of the year from this down draw, it ran all the way back up to the 353 area, right? So uh, earnings came, it dumped hard at 353, came back up, reclaimed the 353, and held here at the 353. I know th these candles are uh, pretty wicky and uh, pretty noisy in my opinion. It, so that's why it took me a while to figure out the key uh, inflection point here. But looking at this daily chart volume, uh, I think 353 holds a lot of water as a key inflection point. So what I want to see tomorrow is uh, basically um, keep the bias both on the long and short side. Really depends on how it reacts pre-market and at the opening to the 353, in my opinion, okay? If uh, the buyers come in and starts holding the 353, then it's a long back up to the 360. And if the buyers drop or if it pops and then uh, sellers are holding at the 360 level, then it's a short and then bring it back down. Now, if it uh, grinds down pre-market and stays under 353, it's a, also a short, in my opinion and uh, pull it back down to the 345 area, which is right about there, okay? 345 area right here. Uh, and then from 345 and beyond, uh, perhaps come down to this uh, 200 SMA here at the 339 level, okay? Um, also, I wanna talk about this 100 SMA, the blue line here. Uh, from the earnings, it from its prior earnings, it dipped down and started holding, and then from here it bounced right off. So um, Netflix does like to follow this type of uh, moving averages, the bigger moving averages. Um, with the stock being so choppy inside this range here, from the 350s to the 370s area, it's really tough to make a call on it. Uh, ideally, I want to see it break out of this range before uh, I put in any bias on the day, but uh, 353, definitely a key level to watch um, as far as support and resistance goes. Let's see here, uh, 360, and then 361.72, and then 358.50 right here. So three levels of resistance. Uh, if I zoom out, you'll see how I get these areas marked out here. Um, zoom out a few more days, right? So 360, obviously, it's very key. Uh, 361 and change here. 361.70s, um, another level that I've marked off right here from uh, the closer time span, okay? And the 358.50s here uh, marks off as an other resistance level from three and six days ago, okay? <clears throat> Support, 350, key, key, psychological whole number. As you can see, it re reacted very well uh, today. Once it gapped up over the 350, it just ran, right? Um, also support this 345 area. Uh, nice psychological whole number. This would be a nice target area. Of course, it can get a little lower. As you can see on this day, it tested the lows here at 342. Um, like I said, again, um, Netflix, a little bit of a tougher trader uh, because it's so volatile. Um, it does definitely have range. You don't need a lot of share size on it. For me, it's harder to manage share size of under 100 shares. And if you're beginning or newer trader, uh, you shouldn't be playing with more than 100 shares on Netflix and uh, perhaps use uh, stop losses of a dollar 
to a dollar fifty for the stock because of such a low float. Uh, a candle can move, right? Uh, we see this here is a dollar twenty-five candle. Here is a dollar candle, right? So making one dollar to two dollar candles for Netflix is uh, it's not tough. Okay, so um, definitely size down a lot when you're playing Netflix, especially tomorrow with the influx of volume coming in and uh, the earnings catalyst. A lot of people are going to be very emotional at the open. So uh, definitely you got to wait for these key levels to hit. Uh, the 360 and the 353 is what I'm watching. Um, next up, we have QCOM, Qualcomm. Uh, looking at this, this is ridiculous, right? I mean, um, this shot up came with uh, the announcement of them, Apple settling with them and uh, selling their, their two-year dispute with them, uh, the litigations and the trials. And uh, Apple is giving them $8, million, $8 billion, okay? So um, they obviously, uh, all of a sudden, they have an influx of cash and uh, causing this massive move here. Uh, let's load up some drawings real quick, QCOM. Okay. So uh, on daily chart, uh, I'm going to mark off this line here. Currently, the stock is in at 75.25, right? Right about there. Okay. Now, when we're looking at QCOM, um, there's two theses to it. Okay, with this coming up so hard, it's definitely overextended, and I know a lot of shorts are uh, in big, big trouble. Okay, this is not just a buy here, uh, this move. This is a combination of a short squeeze and a buy. As you can see, over the past year, uh, short sellers have piled in on every pop, right? And then uh, eventually, uh, this squeeze out. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of accounts have blown. Uh, if not, they took a massive hit here. Let's scroll back a little bit. Um, the litigations and the trials with Apple all started back in 2017, and they took a major gap down from there, right? Okay, so this is the event date. Um, and then scrolling forward again, you can see that QCOM definitely has the balls to go higher. Okay, this is why I do like it for both the long and the short side. Okay, so let's talk about the long side first. Uh, we have some key levels. Um, with the stock being so overextended, you know that a lot of short sellers, uh, especially the stubborn short sellers, are looking at this, looking with their eyes wide open and licking their chops at uh, any chance to short this. Personally, I think that's a big, big mistake um, because of this massive move. Uh, the stock will definitely keep squeezing if they get in too early. So it's definitely tough to short a stock that's running like this. Okay, this thing is uh, basically it made a penny stock move. Uh, with that said, I'm more favored to the long side. Uh, after hours, you do see some major support levels being formed here. And uh, I know there are a lot of green lines, so let's go through them real quick. You know what, let's go into the 15 minute time chart to spread this out a little bit okay um right here the 72 area is a different color i marked off because it's basically a very key key support level or prior resistance level that it broke out of right we are now over it so uh zooming here okay so you see this level test it uh we are over it now so this 72 is a key level of support. 72.50, I use a different shade of green here. It's not much of a support level that uh, would make it key, but it is a nice psychological number. As well as on daily chart coming back here uh, in 2018, um, it, it made some sort of a resistance and then it gapped up from there. So. Definitely worth a note. And then the next level, we have the 72.85 here as support. Now, 72.85. Um, after hours, you see that it's basically the top of this candle right here. 
and then it held a little bit and then it finally broke out from there so uh, this is a breakout level 7285 so I want to see a dip and uh, starts holding definitely looking for some profit taking right uh, whoever bought here um, is gonna take some profits and uh, looking for these areas to hold this is actually 7285 to 73 area okay so let's mark that off here on the daily chart you'll see the significant level let's use 73 uh, right here nice round hole number okay and then finally we have this level here at the 74 ish area it's actually anywhere from 74 to uh, this wick 7385 area so that's what I've marked off <clears throat> this is uh, basically the closest support level that you see here on uh, this ticker right now um, the purple line um, this is kind of like a projection of where I see the pre-market lows is gonna hold as the after hours price action is coming up here uh, it's closed very strong after hours and I do uh, think uh, in the pre-market the stock is going to grind up a little bit and uh, this is going to make its lows here if I'm going on the long thesis so I am uh, watching this area as well the 7466 or 7465 okay now of course the first area of resistance is the after hour high of days right here as you can see 7535 if it uh, gaps up and over, then uh, look for it to hold around this area, the 75 area, okay? And then the next area, we have 76. It's like a nice uh, round hole number resistance over here from the 2018 September 14th level. Is it 2018? Yeah, 2018 uh, September 14th level. And then, of course, the next area of resistance, 76.50. Okay, so right about here. Okay. Okay, so that's how I come up with all these uh, levels of support and resistance. Overall, the average true range for the stock is two dollars. Okay. Um, I like this ticker because the spread should be nice and tight tomorrow. I've traded this before. Um, the moves could be a little bit on the slower side, so it's easier to manage. Um, can it go higher? Definitely, right? The next level breakout would be around the psychological number of 77.50, but um, we'll see. We'll see what it does. I'm looking for a dip at the open or perhaps a gap up in the pre-market and then dip at the open, hold some sort of levels here, uh, hold these support levels, and then uh, looking for higher lows or uh, cap. cap capitulations okay so uh, major volume coming down um, volume exhaustion from the sellers and then looking for a buy from there okay um, yeah that's basically it for my watch list oh you know what I want to put in lift as well uh, right here on lift um, daily chart nice downtrend let's put in some uh, drawings here on lift today um was an interesting day on lift as i was watching it from the open and uh basically it kind of like a retrace and reclaimed okay and uh hit this 57 60s level that i've marked off previously it's uh the prior day slows here and rejected from there now this uptrend has snapped on its retracement and I also want to mention this downtrend Wow delete that let's borrow this line real quick this downtrend right here has now reclaimed and uh, it's following it once again okay so this downtrend line Okay, so um, I'm basically looking for a pop and drop on lift. Uh, we are still coming, trying to test these lows here. If it gaps down, the way it closed, close so weak, if it gaps down, then uh, I'm going to look for a pop and drop. Uh, 56.50 level, 
is a nice level to watch. So I'll mark that off. Okay. And um, I do expect this downtrend to continue. I want to get in as close to this downtrend line as possible, looking like it's going to uh, cover pop at the open and hit this 57 area, which is VWAP of today as well. Okay, so I'll be looking for that and uh, try to get in. Let's go into the one hour chart. One hour chart real quick. And uh, you can see this trend line. It's following very well. So, yeah, definitely going to try to get in short on lift as it come up to this downtrend and shows me a sign of failure. Uh, I think it has another day of coming down. Uh, I bet you a lot of people have options puts on the 55 area as well as the 52.50 and uh, the $50 area, right? So Lyft can definitely dump a lot if it wants to dump, okay? I think the retracement days are over. Today was its day to retrace from uh, yesterday's dump, right? So uh, I think the downtrend will continue tomorrow and uh, looking for a nice juicy short. That's it for my watch list. Uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Tomorrow uh, in the morning, I'll be recording uh, my screen live as I want to be uh, uh, recording some footage of my own trading and learning from them, especially uh, the tape as well. Um, I also uh, took some nice trades today that I want to talk about tomorrow. I will make a video. Um, there was a question from one of my YouTube viewers about risk management. So um, on one of these trades I took today on Apple, um, I, no, on Lyft, I, I took a trade on Lyft this morning um, and it, my, my trade failed, but I managed to risk very well and I want to show you how I did it. Um, basically, it's a safer, smarter way to manage risk and it will uh, save you a little bit more money in the long run. So I will make a video on that. Uh, and I'll see you guys all bright and early tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Ciao.